Now we're ready for something really interesting, okay? We're going to look at the symmetries of the equilateral triangle, okay? And you'll see exactly why group theory uh, has such a connection with symmetry, okay? So as I say, we're looking at the symmetries of a equilateral triangle. That's a triangle that has the same length of sides and the same angles internally, okay? Um, so let's think about the symmetries of this triangle. So by symmetry, I mean, if we transform this uh, triangle in some way, um, it stays the same, okay? So in, in, in a sense, it's invariant under transformation, certain transformations, okay? So what can we do to this uh, triangle to, that will result in it looking the exact same? Well, we can do a few different things, okay? The first thing you can think about is if we label the axes of symmetry, these lines of symmetry here, one, two, and three, okay? We can rotate the triangle, okay, 120 degrees. Okay, if we rotate the triangle 120 degrees, let's do it clockwise, okay? So A moves to C, C moves to B, and B moves to where A is, okay? If we just rotate this triangle 120 degrees, it would look the same. Okay, if we didn't have these labels here, that is. Okay, these labels are just for our convenience. Okay, so um, we can rotate the triangle and it still remains the same or looks the same. Okay, uh, there's something else we can do. Okay, which is we can flip this triangle vertically or sorry, around the vertical um, line of symmetry for example. Um, so if we flip it, C would go to B and B would go to C. We just take the triangle and flip it like that. Okay? That's, um, that's uh, flipping the triangle around the axis labeled 1. We can do the same for the other axes too. Okay? So you can rotate this uh, triangle and you can flip it. Okay, so here's the set of all possible um, transformations of this triangle that leave it invariant. Okay, these are the symmetry, symmetries of this triangle. And this is the group of symmetries, or a set of symmetries. We'll examine in a moment whether it's a group or not. Okay? I is the familiar identity uh, element, the do-nothing transformation. Okay? That's I. Omega, omega, I'm li or W, I'm I'm taking to be rotation uh, of rotation of 120 degrees. Okay, rotation of 120 degrees. So if omega is rotation of 120 degrees, omega omega squared is rotation of 240 degrees. Okay, and of course if you rotate. 120 and then rotate 240 you come back to where you began again you've done the full 360 rotation right so that's omega and omega squared t i'm labeling uh flipping over the line of symmetry labeled one so you could call that flipping over uh, axis one okay q is flipping it over axis two and r is flipping the triangle over axis three okay so this is the sum total of all possible um, symmetry transformations for the equilateral triangle okay let's um let's construct a multiplication table and see what happens okay i have it done out here already because some of these um, uh, can be quite confusing Okay, the combinations I mean. Um, so here we have all our elements listed along the top and the side here. Okay, and as always, we multiply first uh, with the row. Okay, so if we multiply i by each of these elements here, they reproduce themselves as normal as we would expect. Same down this column here. Okay, but if we take a more interesting sample case and choose omega right omega if you, we do an omega rotation which is 
a rotation of 120 degrees. And then we do nothing, it's still omega. If we do omega, rotation 120 degrees, and then another rotation of 120 degrees, we get omega squared, which is a rotation of 240 degrees. If we do omega first, and then we do omega squared, that's back to where we started. So it's as if we did nothing. If we do omega and then p, what does that mean? This is an interesting case. So we do omega, which is a rotation of 120 degrees. And then we do p, which is flip it around the uh, axis labeled 1. Okay, That's the same thing as from the beginning doing a uh, transformation of r, okay, where r is flipping it along the third axis of symmetry. Okay, so you can imagine that uh, if you do it in your head. So first we move uh, 120 degrees uh, clockwise, say, doesn't really matter in this instance. Uh, so a moves to c, okay, and then you flip it over the third um, axis here, okay? So if A goes to C, C would go to B, and B would go to C with the first transformation. So you have C here and B there. So if you flip it, they swap, okay? It's a bit hard to see, but if you follow the logic, uh, it, it's, it's quite clear that omega and then P results in R. Okay, and you can go down through this entire table. Okay, I'm not going to do it uh, all of it, uh, but you can see um, that it's a closed set. At no point are any of the uh, combinations going outside of the original set. Okay, so it is a closed set, which means that it, it satisfies the first condition for being a group. Okay, it does contain the uh, identity element, okay, so it does satisfy the second condition. If we look at the inverse condition, okay, it's obvious that anytime you have a reflection operation, which, which is this flipping operation, okay, it's its own inverse, okay, for the reason that if, for, for example, <clears throat> if we flip uh, the triangle uh, around the third axis, okay, then A goes to B and B goes to A. And then if you flip it back again, it returns to its original form. Okay, so in a sense, each of these P, Q, R operations are their own inverse. The only other uh, situation we have to think about is the rotation uh, situation. So in this case, uh, we touched on it a few moments ago, but Omega squared is the inverse of omega. This is how we, we would write that. Okay, uh, For the reason that uh, omega squared times omega is the identity. So if you, if you think about it like this, if you rotate, if you do omega first, you rotate by 120 degrees. Then you do almost omega squared, which is a rotation of 240 degrees. That gives you a full rotation back to where you started again. So it's the same as doing nothing. So omega squared combined with omega, or omega combined with omega squared, gives you the identity element. This is the condition for stating that omega squared is the inverse of omega, and omega is the inverse of omega squared. Okay, so the inverse condition also applies. Um, I'll just tell you now that associativity also applies in this instance. So this is a group. This is definitely a group, okay? This is the group of symmetries of the equilateral triangle in two dimensions, obviously. Um, there's one other interesting thing to point out though here, and that's that if you draw the line, the diagonal down along here, okay? And if you examine the bottom and top halves of this table, you'll notice something. You'll notice that it's not symmetric, okay, it's not symmetric. The bottom half is not reproduced exactly in the top half. Okay, so that means 
that A, B does not necessarily give you B, A. Okay, in some instances it does. So with omega and then omega squared, we get I. Or with omega squared and omega, we get I. So it doesn't matter in that case. But when you combine the flipping operation, okay, the reflection operation, um, it's, it begins to matter, okay? So for example, uh, let's see, PQ, P omega squared is R, but omega squared P is Q, okay? So in this case, this whole group here, this whole group is not commutative, so it's not an abelian group, okay? And finally, I would just say that if you block off this part of the group, this corner in the top left, okay? These are the rotation um, operations on their own. They actually form a subgroup, okay? So it's easy to see that this little corner is itself closed okay and contains the inverse and the uh, identity elements so it is in fact a subgroup of the um of the whole okay